welcome back to Centennial Roots Homestead. I'm Kristen, and today I wanted to briefly go over the top three plants or weeds that I harvest every spring. Sometimes when you're dealing with natural remedies and herbs, it gets pretty overwhelming with what do I use, when do I use it, how do I use it? And so I wanted to just briefly touch on these and show you a nice easy way to use all the things that you have growing around you. The top three that I use most every year are dandelion, purple dead nettle, and mullein. So we'll go through those today. So the first one that we'll talk about is purple dead nettle. And it will be one of the first green things that you see pop up in your yard every year. It likes well-drained soil and it likes to cover bare ground. Now, one of the things with purple dead nettle is that there is a close um, looks like twin sister almost, unless you look closely, and that would be henbit. And so the difference between the purple dead nettle and the henbit, they do both have a square um, stem to them. They both do have purple flowers. Now these are a little bit older as it's getting later in the spring, but you'll notice that the leaves of the dead nettle are more of a heart shape. The leaves actually come out from each other opposite on that stem, and they do have a little stem before you hit the leaf. The henbit has a different shaped leaf, and it comes directly off the stem to the leaf, if you can see that. So that's one real easy way to determine if you're working with dead nettle or henbit. Now they are both medicinal, and they can both be eaten no problem, um, or I think you get a little bit stronger quality with the purple dead nettle. So that's the one that I aim to harvest every year. So what do I do with this? Well, I go out and pick it. Um, and when it first comes up, it's a lot more green than this one. Um, but I will pick it. I will lay it out and let it dry. And then I will pick these leaves off of the stem. And you can do this before or after it dries completely. It doesn't matter. And once you pick all of these leaves off, then you can just put them in a jar um, to once they're dry. And you can see here I have quite a bit um, of the dead nettle and it's pretty crunchy at this point. So it's easy for me just to throw them in a jar because about the time that these are done, um, there's something else that needs harvested. And so this can be saved for later if you're running out of time. That makes it nice for the homesteader who has a very busy schedule. So I'll just throw mine in a jar. I label it with the date and what it is, and then I can utilize it how I want to later. Um, one of the things that it's great um, to make is dead nettle tea. And that's simple enough. You just put this in a little mug, cover it with a cup of boiling water, let it steep for 10 or 15 minutes, strain off the leaves, and then you have that cup of tea. Now, dead nettle is great because it's rich in vitamins A and C. It's a good source of iron. Um, it helps heal bruises. It helps with minor cuts. And so you get a lot of benefit from simply pulling a weed out of your yard. So drinking a dead nettle tea is very nutritious and beneficial for you, but also making it into a salve for those minor cuts or bruises um, is very beneficial as well and very easy. And we'll be showing you in another video how to do that. The next plant or weed that you might see pop up after the dead nettle is starting to fade is dandelion. Um, dandelion is known as the world's most famous weed. It is also considered a self-contained pharmacy because of so many good things that it can do. Um, so what I do when I see those dandelions popping up real good, I wait until they're nice and full and open and I just go out and harvest the flowers most generally. Now, any part of the dandelion is great. You can use the leaves, you can use the root, um, but generally, again, I'm in a hurry, so I just pop those flowers off, leaving some for the pollinators, but I bring these in. Uh, you can certainly dry them out on a newspaper or a sheet, but I generally just put them on a, a single layer in my dehydrator um, on about 100 degrees for oh, three or four hours until they get nice and crispy. And then again, if I'm in a hurry, I simply throw all of those crispy dandelion flowers in a jar, seal them up, and then I'm ready to make 
any type of herbal medicine from it whenever I have the time. So again, dandelion, gosh, you can do so much with it. One of my favorite things to do though, when I see them coming on really nice and big and beautiful is to just dip them in some egg and flour or some sourdough discard and deep fry them. They taste fantastic. I know it takes a little bit to get past that you're eating a dandelion, but they are worth it. You need to try it. But anyway, after that, with the dried dandelions, my next favorite thing to do is to infuse them in an oil. And you can use any type of oil from olive oil, sunflower, um, any of those that you have in your cabinet. And you just want to put your dandelions in a jar, cover them with oil. Once they're dried, cover them with oil and then let them soak or infuse for about four weeks. You can go as high as six to eight weeks. And once that infusion is complete, you strain out the dandelions and the sediment and your oil then can be used in salads as a salad dressing with some vinegar. Um, it can be used to make a salve. Um, dandelion salve is fantastic for insect stings or burns or bites. Um, so it's a really good thing to have on hand if you've got kiddos in the house and you're out playing in the spring and you get a sting. It's very good as far as detoxing the body. Um, very good for digestion. So with dandelions, um, you can use it on that salad, but you can also, if you've got the time, make a dandelion jelly or even dandelion wine. All of it is very, very good and very nutritious for you. And we will be sharing in another video more detail with the recipes on how to make a dandelion tea or a salve. So be sure to stay tuned for those. One that you may not see as often is mullen. And it's a fun one because it is so versatile. Um, you wanna look for that big, large plant with really hairy, furry, soft leaves. And a lot of times it's more noticeable after it flowers because it sends up that central stalk with the yellow flowers in the middle. But mullen is actually great um, to be used for th with the leaf, the flower, or the root as well. Now it will come up in the spring shortly after the dandelion and the dead nettle are starting to fade. So with mullen, um, it is a biennial, and so you may or may not see that yellow stalk, that stalk with the yellow flowers come up. And um, the first year as a new plant, it probably will just be the leaves. And then the second year, if you watch it, um, that stalk will come up. And I guess one thing that is intriguing to me is that mullen is known as having remarkable narcotic qualities, but it is not poisonous or harmful. So things like an earache, um, you can actually take the mullen leaf, infuse it in an oil, and drop it in the ear and it will calm an earache almost immediately. So that's one of the fun things with it. Um, nerve pain, it works very well if you've got um, like diabetic neuropathy. Um, it will help if you rub that oil that's infused with mullen on those areas of nerve pain. Um, it has been said that it can be used for toilet paper or a diaper in a pinch. Um, and yes, it's very soft and definitely could be um, you would want to make sure that you don't have a sensitivity before you do that though. So this is some mullen that we just pulled um, the leaf today. I've had some mullen leaves drying and you can tell that they're starting to curl and get there, but they're not dry yet. Once they get completely dry, I will just crunch them up and um, put them in a jar as well and save them because you can use them for so many things like oils, tinctures, teas, um, even poultices, if you've got um, a sprained ankle or a swollen joint, um, you can make a mullen poultice and that will um, take care of that rather quickly. It's very good for respiratory. Um, if you're looking around um, the internet now, you'll see that a lot of people are wanting to use it for respiratory. If you think about it, I mean, God knew when to make these plants available for us. And in the spring with all the blooming and the allergies, Certainly, we're all going to be having sore throats and coughing and congestion, and mullen is an excellent um, way to get an expectorant and to calm that upper respiratory um, complaint that you might have. 
So we'll also be doing a video on mullein um, more completely and going through the recipes and showing you how to use those in your own home. So if you have not yet gone out and foraged anything this spring, I encourage you to look for dandelion, purple dead nettle, or mullein and grab some, bring it in, get it dried. Um, we will be putting some more videos out later on more in-depth recipes and how to use this. Or you can head over to centennialroots.com and we will have blogs available also on how to do this. Thanks for joining us today. 